Michael. Hi, Madeline. How are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So good. we're going to be live tonight with Madeline Spencer, broadcaster and beauty journalist. Hi, Madeline. Hi. Hello. I'm so excited about having this chat. Since we spoke the first time last week properly about this, there have been so many questions in my head. So I wondered if for obviously anyone who doesn't know about how you started and how you came to believe the things that you believe about silicones and, and hair care, how you came to that and where you started. Well, I was lucky enough to start here just in the 1970s, which was the really, really the rock and roll heyday. And in, in the 60s and 70s, it was, a, it was a period of great social change. Mm -hmm. It was a time where poor working class kids could rise up and become something. And the, and the fashion industry was uh, an arena for this. We had photographers like David Bailey, Terence Donovan, Brian Duffy, uh, designers like Mary Quant. And they were challenging the old guard and really being quite disruptive. In, in terms of fashion and bringing a whole new way of living to the masses that could now afford things that were previously only, only really for the wealthy. But hairdressers too could become celebrities. And we had Raymond, we had Vidal Sassoon, we had Leonard. Mm -hmm. So back then there were very few hair products. You know, people would put avocado on their hair and eggs as a treatment. They would put beer and vinegar on their hair, sugar water. And, you know, I remember those days of starting hairdressing with very few products then. And, you know, even as a child, my hair was washed with a, a hard block of soap. And then I was waterboarded under a cold tap. And, you know, it makes me think kids today, you know, they don't know they're born, you know, with things like shampoo even. Mm. But, um, yeah, I remember a client that always had beer on her hair before having it blow dried. And this was to give it texture and body. And, you know, if we'd run out of beer, someone had to go to the off license and get a can to, to, to the client. And yeah. you know, even after we developed much better blow dry lotions and sprays, she, she was steadfast in staying with this regime of having beer for the next 20 years. Um, and in your view, did those things work? I mean, because I also remember the time when the advice in magazines was, you know, beer, a beer rinse is great for your hair or eggs. I think it's egg whites were meant to be good in your hair, but you couldn't use hot water because it would cook the egg in. So it was all these kind of... Yes, you get an omelette on the head. Exactly. <laughs> Funny <laughs> advice. And I remember my sister, who's eight years my senior, was devoted to these hair rituals that were literally like putting cooking things in your hair. Yes, basically yes. do you think they worked did you well, see I, think, I, I think what they were drawing from is the is the proteins and the oils going into the hair but right um, you know the protein that makes up hair is, is not the same as the protein that makes up a steak and and so it, it, science has, has evolved since then and we understand things better but but it's interesting that you know you, you hear stories of what went on back then mm. and it was all very natural but then I think we went from a period when we were using, you know, natural products that weren't that effective to science gone mad using some really aggressive ingredients. Mm -hmm. you know, many of those things would be banned now. So tell um, me what you saw at that point in the quality of hair and the shift in what happened to hair that you were seeing every day. Well, I think I think people were doing much less to their hair. So, mm -hmm. you know, hair quality was better. You know, people weren't. We didn't have the, the super hot um, styling tools in those days. There weren't ag ag aggressive products at mm -hmm. the time in the 70s. There were very few products, in fact. And, you know, colouring, although I would say colouring has got much better nowadays, only in the right hands. People are doing, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're doing too much colour in some ways on top of the same hair again and again. Mm -hmm. So... You know, that along with some of the very aggressive products that we have now, certainly hair quality is much worse now than it was 40 years ago, for sure. Right. 
Um, we've had a couple of questions, um, which I'm going to come to at the end. Um, I wanted to keep you on this sort of journey, as it were, for now, because this feeds in quite neatly to your um, views on silicon. So yeah. there was this explosion suddenly of this new technology, and everyone went, this is it, this is the answer, right? Let's make hair really smooth and really lovely. And of course, the minute you put silicone in your hair, it does feel very smooth, yes. very straight, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Why is it that you are not the biggest fan of it as an ingredient in hair care? Well, I, I have a long history um, of understanding uh, products. You know, I've touched and felt hair for 43 years. I love the feeling of natural, natural hair. Mm -hmm. um, if we go back to those early 80s, when Siam started to take over with hair care, and there was an explosion of products on the market, and the, the, the earliest product I remember that was starting to play with silicon and plasticizers was a product called Wash and Go by P&G. And that at the time was actually the biggest selling shampoo in the world. Yeah. It was a billion dollar brand, number one. Mm. And then come into the early 80s, there were, there were clients starting to complain and the public starting to complain about their hair falling out and going thinner. And this went around in professional circles and it became the word on the street that there was an issue going on here. People didn't know quite why. It was a, a two-in-one shampoo that does tend to compact in the hair follicles. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this was a problem. It appeared in the press as well. And I remember working one day in the salon with a client and reception came over and said, there's a call for you from someone at P&G. And I thought, well, why, why do they want to speak to me? I took the phone call and the person on the other side was saying, um, we understand that there are these things going around about wash and go, that there, there are problems. Why, why are you speaking like this? What are you talking about? And I said, all, all I'm seeing and hearing from people is this, that that's what's going on. We finished conversation. I heard nothing more. About 18 months later, Wash and Go was withdrawn from the market, disappeared. Mm -hmm. And P&G then relaunched another product called Pantene, which was another two-in-one um, product. Yeah. So that was the earliest part. And then going on, going on a few years, the very first concentrated silicon product was um, a professional product called Laminates um, by Sebastian um, in LA. It was a very expensive product, session hairdressers were using it. We, we, we were using it in studios on shoots and it was a very good product for smoothing out um, the model's hair, making it look shiny, um, less frizz. And that was great. John had the idea to play with this in the salon on clients, blow drying their hair, and saw that it had this quality of blocking moisture into the hair so that if someone had frizzy hair blow dried, it would last better through damp weather. We were part of that small unit that were testing samples of these submissions that we were creating something new. And that then went on to become Frizzies, which was you know, the most successful mass market product of the 90s. Mm -hmm. So all the other manufacturers looked at this product and saw that with a very cheap additive, you could give the illusion of healthy hair. And so now nearly all hair products, shampoos, conditioners, treatments have silicon in them, our, our don't. This is something I equate to makeup versus skincare in my head because hair very, care very that really cares for your hair yes. makes your hair or keeps your hair healthy and sustains it. Makeup is the thing that goes on top that when you think, oh, you know what I could do with a bit of extra black there, a bit of extra shadow here, or a bit of extra, you know. And I think sometimes if you don't understand what's going on with your hair, and for many of consumers, they don't, um, you'll put something on your hair, it will feel better, look better. And you think, job's done. That's the right thing to put on my hair. But you're not solving the problem, which is that you're damaging your hair. So I wondered if before we talk about the sort of answer to this, um, I don't want to say a addiction but something akin to addiction where you're sort of putting things on your hair thinking yes 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 it's making it better i wonder if you could go, run through some of the things including the silicones that damage your hair so what takes your hair from its natural 
beautiful childhood state, as it were, to the hair where it's in dire need of help? Well, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a very good point. And I think that um, people think hair care is more complex than it is. Mm -hmm. um, hair care in its simplest sense is really about trying to retain the beauty and health of the fresh hair that leaves your scalp. Right. And for most people, if they were to feel the hair near the root, they would see that it's actually thick, it's supple, it's shiny. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's not how they judge their hair. They judge their hair by what's going on on the tips. Mm. So they think, I've got pretty hair, I've got dry hair, I've got brittle hair, I've got hair that won't do anything. Yeah. But that's really about lifestyle. And so, as you very rightly said, there, there isn't the um, understanding in the hair market for a separation between hair care and hair cosmetic like there is with makeup. You have makeup, mm -hmm. you have skin care. It's very clear, people understand that. And uh, there are times when you wanna have makeup, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't rely on makeup for skin care. Quite. Unfortunately, the entire hair care market is called mm -hmm. hair care, but probably about 98% of it is hair makeup. It's <laughs> an illusion disguising poor health. And unfortunately, right. much of it is adding to that poor health. It will make it good today, but it'll make it a little bit drier next week. And why is that? Because what is it, what is it those silicones and other things do on the surface of the hair that dries it? So the structure of hair is more or less 97% protein and 3% yeah. water. Your, your fresh hair out of the scalp is about 97%, 3% water. In the humid summer months, it will take on a bit more water. In the dry winter months, it will lose water to the atmosphere mm -hmm. by osmosis, and the hair will shrink and will become shorter and thinner. So protecting the water uh, balance in the hair is very important because if the hair becomes dehydrated, the protein structure becomes less stable, more vulnerable. So whereas hair, healthy hair has an ability to bend and stretch and then return to its normal state dehydrated mm -hmm. hair will bend when it comes back some of the molecules will break away because it doesn't have the, the flexibility that the moisture would give it there used to be this test i don't know whether you think this it has any credence where you would take a strand of your hair and pull it by like a centimeter and if it went back your hair was fine and if it broke your hair was not fine is that a good test uh not really. It's, it's, it's okay. true in a sense because yeah. you know, a healthy hair will stretch quite a lot, more than mm -hmm. people would, would imagine, and return to normal, whereas right. a healthy hair wouldn't. But you know, I think people can feel hair and they know whether it's healthy or not. Yeah. You know, yeah unhealthy so, hair doesn't have the spring and the vibrancy yeah. and the allure that healthy hair does. Mm -hmm. I want to quickly return to the lifestyle question. Um, so aside from products, it, do things like the things you eat, the things you drink, the way, let's say, the atmosphere you live in, do those things all affect the hair by the time it gets to here? Is that a big factor? Um, it's, a, it's a factor. It's a, it's a factor in how your hair grows. You know, the mm -hmm. genetics play a part. Your lifestyle plays a part. So if you don't have a healthy diet... Mm -hmm. your, your hair is more or less the last in the queue for nutrients. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not life-threatening. If your body is short of nutrients, you know, your hair will wait till last. So mm -hmm. a healthy diet is important. Yep. You know, oxygen running through the system, exercise, all those things, healthy blood flow will have a, a, an impact on taking nutrients to the hair and mm -hmm. toxins away. So right. not smoking. You know things like that. It, it's proven that people that smoke, they, they will go grey quicker, mm -hmm. and you know they will not have the same quality of hair because mm -hmm. it's de de depriving the hair follicle of, follicle of nutrients. But, Over the, yeah. but it's a small part. Okay. Now most people will look at their hair and think, "I've got bad hair. I'll take a pill. Mm -hmm. I've got bad hair, or I'll do X, Y, Z." If you feel the hair coming out of your scalp and that's the problem, then yes, there may be a lifestyle issue. 
but for most people, it's everything that happens on the outside. Okay. And if you've got hair down to your shoulders, it may be two or three years old. Everything you do in those two or three years is shrinking and drying out the hair. So let's say you have hair that's down to here, that I'm here, <laughs> down to here, and it's already dry and it's starting to look not so great. You're someone who has used, you know, let's say traditional hair care products and, and straight, straightens your hair, let's say, once a week, twice a week. Yeah. yeah. How do you scale it back? How do you move away, particularly because over the next few weeks, we're going to focus on lots of different elements of hair care. But this week, it's specifically silicon. So I want to sort of home in on that a little bit here. Um, but in terms of taking away that crutch, how do you do that? And can hair be restored, as it were, to good health? Yes. So if, if your hair has become dry, you, know, you may have healthy hair. You go out, go out on a cold winter's day. The atmosphere will suck moisture out of your hair. It may become dry and electric. The, these are singular events. Mm -hmm. you know, that can be restored. But if you have these consistent dehydration moments, you know, let's say you've got three-year-old hair, you've got pro probably just over a thousand days from that the ends have suffered. So if you have um, hot styling tools that are not well used mm -hmm. every other day, that's 500 burnings of the ends of the hair. If you're mm -hmm. over-coloring your hair, you know, instead of the hair being colored once, fine, you're coloring it 10 times. You know, that, that is all going to dehydrate and shrink the hair down. If you're using silicon products, which will displace moisture because they are mostly hydrophobic, you mm -hmm. put them on the hair, they wedge themselves into the cracks and voids and also push out some of the natural moisture. Mm -hmm. That's another dehydration moment. All these moments weaken the hair shaft. The hair shaft narrows down. As it narrows down over time, you cannot restore that back to the hair that was twice as thick at the root. Okay. So, you know, if you have, a, I'll show you an image here. If you see yeah. an image here. So this mm -hmm. is a not uncommon um, situation with many people that do, do a lot to their hair and don't actually look after it. Mm -hmm. the, last, the last third of the hair has lost probably 90% of the hair, either yeah. through breakage or shrinkage. You know, and this is an illustration of a hair shaft here very full mm -hmm. of the root, the, the mm -hmm. scales, are, the cuticles are laying down, so the hair is shiny, it will reflect light. As it starts to thin and, and break down, the cuticle lifts, so the hair starts to feel rougher. That mm. continues, that dehydration and breakdown of the protein layer continues, it gets mm. thinner and thinner. At this point here, it can no longer hold moisture because the, the structure is so shot through like a honeycomb that the water can't hang on, any, hang on anyway. You can dip it into the sea, take mm. it out, it will still be too dry. Once it dries off, it, it won't hold on to water. Nothing will return that mm -hmm. to this. But this, okay. didn't happen, this didn't happen from one event. Mm -hmm. This happened for a consistent event of dehydration and breakdown of the protein structure. So to return, to return the hair to health, looking after the, the hair and using good quality treatments as well will protect this hair so that you retain more of the structure as it grows down but this hair here that will start to break and split mm. can never be returned to that you have so to once it's there product. once it's there at the bottom this yeah. is where a you might need to cut your hair and yeah. b you, this is where people think that their hair doesn't grow long, right? Because there are lots of people who have exactly, this exactly. idea. Exactly, exactly. People okay. think their hair that only gets, put, gets to their shoulder and stops growing. It right. doesn't stop growing at the root. Mm -hmm. It's just disintegrating just as fast at the ends because it's, and, it's got to this stage. Exactly. And also, the thing I was going to say, really, is that that's when your hair is in that middle zone where it's being damaged and you're thinking, what can I do? Now, I think for lots of people who like styling their hair, it is is unlikely that they're going to stop entirely. Maybe you can scale it back slightly. But if you love straightening your hair, you love straightening your hair, right? Sure, sure. Um, 
And for a lot of people, washing their hair is something, you know, if you like washing hair every day, you're going to do it every day again. That's not a problem either. That's not a problem. So the thing is, I'm guessing, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm guessing that the answer to some extent is to get silicone out because you're then able to treat the hair differently. Is that right? That's one, that's one part of it. Silicon mm. is, is like a barrier. Right. So not only is it pushing the moisture out, it's stopping goodness getting back in. Gotcha. So silicon, it, it, it's sticky stuff. Mm. You know, it can take 10 to 20 washes to get rid of the silicon. Sorry, 10 to 20? Absolutely, yeah. Ah, sorry. Right. Again, which brings me to the idea of the cold turkey phase where you're coming off it, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, fine. It's, you know, it, if, you, if you get a, a silicon-rich product, you know, like, yeah. like a serum, that some of them are like 98% silicon, pour it into a, a glass and then try and wash it. it mm -hmm. It's resistant to shampoo. It's a nightmare to clean after. Okay. <clears throat> this is what's going on in your hair. So you formulated without <clears throat> silicon. Yeah, we formulate without silicon. Um, it's based on a hero product, Lifesaver here, which... Um, was our original product that we, mm -hmm. you know, our history with this goes back 30 years as a prescriptive product. Yeah. Um, but it's more recently been a, a w available to the, the wider public. And, um, you know, that works by feeding the hair at a deep level, restoring hydration and protecting the hair from mm -hmm. that thinning mm -hmm. and degrading of the hair. And, and people that go beyond silicon and go beyond that cold turkey find that they actually have hair they've forgotten they had. Yes. Because people just accept what they have and think, well, I've just got bad hair. My hair just doesn't do stuff. Which in turn, which in turn also might mean you want to style it less slash need to style it less. Need to style it less. If you, yeah. if you have a better technique of things, you, you find you can get much better results with less mm. effort, mm. less damage to the hair. So, you know, I'm a hairdresser. We love doing hair. We love colouring mm -hmm. it. We love blow drying it. We love styling it. You know, we don't want to stop doing that. Yeah. But we will use techniques and we will get a, effects that last better Mm -hmm. and, and much, much less damaging on the hair. Yeah. Can I add here that um, this is something I said to you when we were chatting before, but I often will, you know, my friends will message me about products because they know that I love talking about beauty and I'm always sort of up for that conversation. And I have had so many of my friends who've tried the preconditioning treatment message me and say, hello, <laughs> this is completely game changing. It's very changing. different. It is a game changer. It's completely game changing. I'm a massive fan of it and um it's one of the things that if i want to feel good and i want my hair to feel good it always comes out without question and um i just wanted to say though that when you're doing that and you're introducing people to your products and things like that do you find you get more people coming back to your salon talking about it because you said to me also we were talking about the retention rates in lots of salons and it's not that great but you have a really really loyal yeah very loyal um, I want to say fan base, but loyal, loyal client base, and also people who are very loyal to the products, which again is a yes. rarity. Yeah. So, um, do you think that's about the? Do you think it's as much about um, the how effective the products are, or do you think it's just about the culture of what you do, where you are illuminating, let's say, the truth? You know, you are you're saying things. You're very forthright, and you're being very honest about something. And do you think that it's as? Do you think it's a combination of both? What do you think it is that makes people so loyal to you? I, I think we approach products in the same way that we approach our client service. And we have over 100 clients that have been with me for more than 40 years, which is yep. um, I started when I was at school. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, the products have to work. Yep. We, we, they're sold all over the world. And you know, they've been selling um, in Australia for uh, five or six years now. And you know, I haven't paid too much attention to the Australian market. I, I have been out there a couple of years ago um, mm -hmm. to do some promotion, but only for the first time recently, I looked at the website for Mecca. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a wonderful company, Mecca, that um, stock our products out there. And I looked at the reviews for Lifesaver, and you know, even I was surprised they, because they, they sell, and I counted, they sell 598 products. Lifesaver had the highest reviews 
equal with another product of all yeah. 598 products. Mm -hmm. And it had the second highest number of reviews. And many of them were saying, this product, I don't understand why it's not better known. It's the most amazing product. For anyone who doesn't know what it is or how it works, could you give a quick pressy on, on what it is? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a deep treatment that essentially restores back to the hair what the hair is made of. Um, there's a, a, a unique complex of cashmere proteins and conditioners, and the, the cashmere protein divides down into amino acids, which are almost identical to the human hair structure. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that the hair absorbs it at a deep level and accepts it. That allows the hair to retain a more correct water balance. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 it's more held together in terms of its protein structure and more flexible. So it doesn't actually age as quickly. Gotcha. Now, there, there are lots of things out in the market which claim to you know, help this, these oils and those treatments. But you know, quite frankly, most of them just sit on the surface. You know, and as lovely as uh, an oil from a tree in the Amazon might sound, if the hair doesn't accept it, because hair isn't made of silicon, it isn't made of argan oil, yeah. it is, isn't made of those things, then it's pu purely superficial. It's not doing anything to help retain the structure of the hair. Yeah. So, you know, in some ways, it, it's, it's complicated creating products that work so well, but the science behind it is very simple. Yeah, again, I'd go back to the skincare comparison where it's, you know, lovely to put something on your face that makes it look good. But if it's just going to sit on the surface, no point. I want to say here, um, if anyone has any questions, please pop them below and we'll come to it. I have two remaining questions for you. The first is, do we have the exact same statue in the background? <laughs> it's close. <laughs> it's pretty close, isn't uh, it? Mine's, mine's Nike. Yeah. Um, a, a smaller version of the one in the Louvre. Um, mm -hmm. and yours is probably some other Greek goddess. Right, wonderful. Okay, I've never ever done a live with anyone who's had the same thing in the background. <laughs> now, the other thing I want to say to you is, okay, so lots of people watching this might want to try your products, move off the silicon, and be perhaps a little bit nervous, perhaps a little yeah. bit, you know, I mean, it's a good time to try it, right? Because we're all at home more, and, and I suppose we're not getting out as much. So if you need to make a change, it's a good time to do it. But tell me, what can people expect? If you're a complete silicon junkie and you stop using it, how long, what will it be like, and what's normal? Well, it, it's, for, for, for most people, it's instantly transformational. Yeah, that's what I had. But yeah. if your hair <laughs> is so destroyed by mm -hmm. color, um, aggressive styling, aggressive products, um, sun, seawater, whatever, if it's so destroyed and the only way you're surviving is to coat that with silicon, then stopping coating that with silicon and thinking that the lifesaver is going to restore this type of hair back to here, mm -hmm. it's not. Okay. It can't. It will protect this hair and yep. stop it becoming like this. But if much of the hair is in this condition, it actually can't, you know, that hair's gone. Mm -hmm. you know, that hair is nothing like normal hair anymore. Yeah. If it had too many color treatments, too much heat styling, too much damage, it's just nothing like normal hair mm -hmm. and won't behave like normal hair. You know, Lifesaver, unfortunately, Lifesaver is a deep treatment and it's an mm -hmm. incredible product, but it's not a varnish. Right. And if you're used to varnishing over the damage and it's so damaged that that's all you can do, then Lifesaver isn't yeah. gonna, it won't change it overnight. It will change it over time, but it won't change it overnight. That's such a handy chart to have, I think, to manage expectations because actually I think there is this sort of miracle thing that sometimes people hope for, but actually, you know, any having anything work for a long time and look good for a long time is about an investment and sort of trying something. So I have a question. Um, do you comb it through and put it in a bun? How do you use Lifesaver best? So, so the, the, the great thing about Lifesaver is that it goes on before the hair's washed. So mm -hmm. that, that's a bit of a revelation for most people. The reason it can go on before the hair's washed is because it goes deep. Any yeah. treatment that tells you to wash your hair first, you know it's only on the surface because it won't sustain a shampoo after. Yeah. It'll just all go down the sink. 
So it's nothing really more than a fancy conditioner that you're paying yeah. 10, 10 times the price for. <laughs> so, so basically, you put enough on to wet mm -hmm. the hair from root to tip. Remember, it's not just about trying to do something to the damaged ends. It's about protecting the hair, all of the hair. Yeah. So you wet the hair down from root to tip, comb it through, and then you either just leave it, or if you want to tie it up, you know, people will do it before they go to the gym, people mm -hmm. will do it before they go to bed. You know, yeah. It doesn't mess the pillow, it dries clean, the hair will drink it up, and you can wash it whenever you're ready. You know, at least an hour overnight, mm -hmm. some people leave it on for a couple of days if they like the way it, it dries on their hair. I put it on first thing in the morning, and then on my like chores day, clean the house, do boring things, then have a bath, wash it out, and my hair feels gorgeous. So that's kind of one of the things that I completely love doing. Loads of people are saying it's completely and utterly brilliant and the best things they've used, et cetera, et cetera. Um, someone asked though about collagen for hair health. What do you think of that? Uh, I, I can't comment on that because I, mm -hmm. I don't know enough of the science behind that. Right. Okay. You know, um, in skin, it's a bit, it plays a big part. I, I, I'm not aware of um, it playing a big part in the structure of hair. And how hair works. Okay. And there was one other question. Um, my hair is so fine and thin. Any recommendations? Um, I don't know whether this is just at the ends, but let's assume it's from the roots. Um, what are the things you can do if hair is very fine and thin? So this is a very good question because, um, because most people's experience of a treatment is something heavy. Mm -hmm. Most of them have silicon in them. Right. Um, most people with finer hair avoid treatments because they're used to them making their hair heavy and lank. The fact is, those with finer hair or fragile hair need treatments more than ever because mm -hmm. they need the hair to be boosted and to be strengthened so that it stays supple and doesn't thin down and break. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those that with fine hair that use the... Um, uh, treatment find that actually it works like nothing else has worked on their hair right okay and um, someone else has said my hair's falling in bunches can you suggest something so shedding and what's the normal amount of shedding so the normal amount of shedding is about 80 to 100 hairs a day right uh, sounds like a lot mm -hmm. um, but that is in the normal cycle of growth and, and fall growth mm. and fall and um, if someone is conscious of hair fall, then, or they've grown their hair and a hundred hairs, if you're conscious and you start looking, that's a, that makes a lot of hairs in the mm -hmm. shower tray or in a brush, but uh, 80 to a hundred hairs a day is normal. What people will find is in the winter months, and it's the same every year throughout my career, mm -hmm. where the atmosphere changes from humid to dry, usually around October, central heating goes on, the atmosphere changes outside. Mm -hmm. Because of the dry air, people's hair shrinks. And so suddenly their hair's looking thinner anyway, and it's mm -hmm. less responsive because it's less flexible. So th this is where suddenly people start to find their hair's difficult. They're looking mm -hmm. for problems. They're seeing hair in a brush or in a shower drain thinking, oh my God, my hair's falling out. Yeah, but it's not. It's generally not. There are hormonal cycles and seasonal cycles as well, but, but generally mm -hmm. the period when summer ends or autumn ends and winter starts is mm -hmm. when people struggle with their hair. And your range, um, would you say, which product would you say is best for someone with a lot of hair and also very thick hair? Well, the Lifesaver works for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Short hair, long hair, fine hair, thick hair. It's an amazing product. So all hair types. In terms of styling, if you want to reduce the amount of hair you have, then you're going to want to use smoothing products. Mm -hmm. So in our range, that would be more the moisturizing shampoo and conditioner, um, uh, a magic oil here, which is a silicon-free oil, which mm -hmm. is quite unusual because most of the oils are full of silicon. Um, this is an amazing product as well. Um, so for thicker hair, it's about smoothing the hair down generally. For finer yes. hair, it's about plumping the hair up. So mm -hmm. we have products to thicken, volumize. But those are, those are usually the two key issues. Either people want to have more hair or they want to reduce the, the hair they have to smooth it. Right. So if I were going to say, in summary, 
silicon effectively, a way to think about it is as a makeup product that doesn't care for hair. So it is a thing that goes on top and gives you the temporary feeling, but doesn't actually look after it. Whereas products that contain ingredients that your hair can absorb and that help them out effectively have to be formulated very well. And that's something that you have done with all your products effectively. Like they all work incredibly well. Well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't release a product unless we felt it was best of breed. You yeah. Know, if there was something on the shelf that we could buy that was better, mm -hmm. you know, I, I wouldn't foist it on my stylist and I mm -hmm. wouldn't want to use it myself. It, it's, it's, there's no point. We would only mm -hmm. launch something if we felt that it was better than anything that we could source. Sure. So every product we have is two, three, four years in development um, because we have the salon. Everything mm -hmm. is tested. You know, I'm feeling hair all the time. Yeah, you know, I'm getting honest feedback from clients mm -hmm. e each day, and we've we've tested thousands of submissions of samples, mm -hmm. and hundreds of reworkings and tweaks of our products because we're always looking to improve them. Mm -hmm. And I want to say for anyone who hasn't been into the salon, it is the most wonderful community where you go in. And it's like sort of going into family and people really care and want to help you. And I think that's another thing that fosters the massive loyalty you have is people love the atmosphere. It doesn't feel like you're being processed. It feels like someone's caring about you and your hair. We, we have a, a wonderful team and many yeah. of them have been with us for 10, 20, 30 years now. Yeah. They're, they're a great team. They are like a family. Yeah, it's brilliant. I am going to tonight actually use some of the free shampoo conditioner and I'm going to make my hair really nice and silky for the weekend um I want to thank you so much for making time to have this chat I'm looking forward to the next few weeks and I feel like um I'm going to learn a lot and hopefully everyone who's watched this has also picked up lots of your knowledge thank you very much thank you have a lovely evening thank you bye bye, bye everyone